Hi, I'm Sean Bean and I'm doing a Wired Autocomplete interview. Have I got to answer this? Who is Sean Bean married to? I'm married to Ashley Moore, or Ashley Bean now. And uh, she's my wife and she's a wonderful woman. And I'm very happy with her. <laughs> Who does Sean Bean look like? I used to look like Ian Glenn, who was in Game of Thrones. <laughs> And we were always competing for parts uh, uh, when we were younger, when we just left drama school. Who does Sean Bean support? Well, I've got three children. <laughs> <laughs> but I also support Sheffield United football team in, uh, in the UK, the Blades. They just chuck it. <laughs> it's like a hooligan. What's Sean Bean? Movies. Doesn't Sean Bean die in? Oh God, I should. <laughs> That's a hard question. The first film I made was a film called Stormy Monday. Well, one of the first, and uh, and I didn't die in that. I nearly died, but I didn't. The Martian, I didn't die in that. There's not many that I actually survived in. That's it. The old rest, I died. <laughs> Which is why I'm second in the dying league, after Christopher Lee. I have to see if I can. Uh, Bump it up a bit. What age is Sean Bean? My birthday is uh, in about two weeks. It's my 60th. What school did Sean Bean go to? My first school was a, uh, a school called Hansworth Junior Schools, not far from where we used to live. And then I went to Athelston School, which is just a little bit further on till I was 12, and then I went to a place called Brook School till I was 16, and I left at 16. What has Sean been narrates? narrated? I guess that is. I did a thing called um, Yorkshire uh, the Seasons in the Yorkshire Wilds, and uh, that was all about nature and natural history. I've done quite a few natural history narrations. I narrated uh, a thing called The Elder Scrolls. Oh, yeah, I did Civilization, yeah, because I've been in Boromir and uh, I've been Boromir in Lord of the Rings and the Game of Thrones. You tend to get sent things that are like old world mysteries, which are, you know, I find quite interesting. So they're, they're quite a pleasure to actually uh, read. What does Sean Bean think of Game of Thrones? I think it's brilliant. I mean, I, I don't think any of us expected to, to have it as such a phenomenal um, influence on people's lives. You know, you find politicians quoting lines like winter is coming and this and that, and trying to use it for their own advantage, which is rather pathetic and it's quite funny, comical, really. It was good for all of us because it's, it's intelligent and it's well planned out, it's well thought, it's imaginative and uh, surreal and shocking. And I'm very proud to have been involved from the beginning, for just the beginning. <laughs> well, all right, it's Chucky that side. Ooh, rebel. Right. Oh, Ned Stark now. Why is Ned Stark so honourable? I think it's because of his lineage, his, his heritage and his family, his fathers before him, his father, his grandfather. I think they had a code of honour uh, which, uh, which has gone on for hundreds, if not thousands of years. He was one of the very few men or women uh, in Game of Thrones that really had anything that you could call honour or, or fairness or, uh, you know, he was firm, he was firm with his children, with his, with his people, but he was also very fair and very uh, charitable and respectful of, of those around him, even the people he commanded, yeah. Why does Ned Stark yell Baelor? It's because Arya, and I, I hope that Baelor would save her and look after her and keep her, keep her well, you know, keep her alive. Why is Ned Stark's sword so big, you know? That's what she said. It's, I think he's, uh, he's just like his big swords, you know? I think he said, oh, I want a really big sword when I, when I get older, Dad. How did Ned Stark know winter was coming? When we first started Game of Thrones, it was autumn and it was already starting to get a bit cold at that time. So, you know, by the time we finished, it was winter, so I, I knew it was, uh, was going to get a bit cold that year. And then I, it was a line in the, in the Game of Thrones. I thought, f*** me, that's unbelievable, isn't it? I've just said that. 
So really, they copied it off me, and because uh, I knew winter was coming. What does Ned Stark whisper before he dies? It was just something to myself, obviously. I think it was a, a song. It might have been Gangnam Style. That was it. Yeah, I went Gangnam Style. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was a little prayer that I sometimes do myself, and I sometimes say because I wanted it to be something. I didn't want to just be like mouthing something and we're going like you know because that doesn't mean anything and I think it changes things so I, 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 I thought that I would do something that actually meant something to me it was a, a you know a plea for help in some way so that it actually did make sense to me and it felt right for me and uh, and it was true why Ned Stark died he, he was a good man and he was getting in the way of things. He, was, uh, he, he wasn't corruptible. He, wasn't, uh, he wouldn't join in this little nest of vipers that, were, that, that he'd become embroiled with. It's a bit like someone who's tortured or who's... They want to keep him alive, but unless he agrees with them and unless he confesses that what he has done in the past is wrong, then they, they have to get do away with him. It's a bit like um, Thomas More in England in the uh, medieval times when they wanted him to uh, renounce his faith, but he wouldn't. They tried everything, but he, uh, he stood fast by what he believed in, and they killed him. Why Ned Stark is the best? He could be the best because he's, uh, he's the only one with a moral compass, the only one who, uh, who would you, you, you'd be able to trust and to be able to rely on and ask for advice and counsel. I think he probably is the best in that, in that way, yeah. He's the best man. Did Ned Stark love Jon Snow? Uh, yeah, I think, I think he did, yeah. Yeah, he, it was a difficult relationship because of, you know... Uh, reasons that have been already explained now, but um, he, he tried to treat him as he, he did all his children. And I think he, he loved him as one of his children. Why Ned Stark never told Caitlin? I think Caitlin had an inkling of what had gone on. She noticed there was a different relationship between me and John. Maybe it was an unspoken thing, but I, I always had a feeling that she, uh, she sensed something wasn't quite true. And you could say that's, you know, one of Ned's, um, that's his Achilles heel, because, um, you know, he wasn't loyal in that sense to his wife, was he? So, Did Ned Stark know about White Walkers? I think he knew, he knew of them, he knew there was something there, yeah, because he was uh, wary of, of, of things in that area, in that direction, in that part of the world. And maybe because he didn't want to alarm his, uh, his people and his family, but I think he knew there was something not quite right over there. And, and they'd been there a long, long time, White Walkers. So I don't think maybe it was something that was passed on to his family, and if, even if he didn't make a fuss about it or mention it, then I, I still think he was aware of them. Does Sean Bean have a tattoo? I've got two that I can speak of. Uh, one is a uh, Sheffield United tattoo, it, was, it says 100% Blade, which is a Blade's a nickname for the uh, Sheffield United. I like that, I'm very proud of that one. And I've also got um, Lord of the Rings uh, tattoo. It's only about that big. It's in Elvish and it means nine, which is how many there were in, in the, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. There were nine of us, so we, had, we all had that done. And I had it done here, actually. In New York. It was for the premiere of Lord of the Rings, and I went out with Orlando Bloom and Elijah Wood, and uh, I was the last one to have it. And they kind of said, Come on, you're the last one, you've got to go and have it done tonight. So uh, we went out and we, we saw a band, and then we came home, went to bed. And the next morning it was uh, September the 11th. It was a kind of bittersweet moment that, uh, that night and the following morning. Yeah. But that's where I had that done, and uh, but it's good, you know, I'll, it's, we've all got it, and so it's, uh, it's like a bonding thing, isn't it? And uh, quite proud of that one, too. Uh, why did Sean Bean change his name? I thought it's, it might be a bit catchier, which it, it, it's, that's turned out to be, but 
I don't know if it's for the right reasons, because everybody calls me Seen Bean now or Sean Bourne. I just guess it was a little bit fanciful. But, you know, I just left drama school. I thought I'd catch your name, and that was it, really. And um, it's all right. <laughs> Are Sean Bean and Vigo Morton some friends? Yes, yes, I got on very well with Vigo, and uh, he's an interesting character. He's, uh, uh, you know, slight, quite wacky and slightly out there, you know, which makes him very curious and very interesting to me. What I like about him is that he's, he, he's an actor, and we all know that, but he's also a, a photographer, a very good photographer, an artist and a de designer. How many episodes did Sean Bean play in Game of Thrones? <laughs> I think I was in nine, yeah. And I wasn't in the 10th, for obvious reasons, you yeah. know. Thank you, Internet, for Googling me. <laughs>